Sir, I will fire. Do it. Kill me. Dude, pull your hand out. I do not want to shoot you. Do it. I need do you it. to sit down. Here, go, go, go. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Take your hand out of the jacket. Have you ever wondered how you might react if you're a police officer in some of the situations that they face day to day? Well, wonder no more because we're going to find that out today on Switched. This is where civilians take on the shoes of police officers and have to make those critical decisions when life is on the line. Let's go. Switch. They going to learn here today, yeah. There's so many of you guys that come from different backgrounds. We have law enforcement here. We have people that uh, in the NFL, people that have been incarcerated here, former friends of mine that, from, that go way back to high school. So it's a very diverse group. And the goal is to, for all of us to learn a little bit about what law enforcement is about, how we do our job, what we do, but also kind of get to you know put yourself in their shoes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna coach you guys up a little bit as far as from the beginning, kind of tell you, give you guys the call for service, what you guys are supposed to do. But at the end of the day, you guys have to make decisions. Every single police officer that's patrolling the street right now has to make decisions every second of the day. We have an interesting background. Uh, I met Ryan Tillman uh, through a mutual friend. I am a formerly incarcerated person. I am also someone who works in the film industry as a location scout for television shows and movies. I'm sort of in the middle. I'm someone who stands between the extremes. I have had my own run-ins with law enforcement, obviously. Not all of them were great experiences. However, I do have friends uh, and other folks in my life that I care about that are members of the law enforcement community. I want to work for a world where maybe law enforcement wouldn't be needed one day down the road in the future. But in the meantime, if something happens to my family, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> also, you know, that's gonna be my first call. And I have to reconcile that in myself, no matter how I feel about law enforcement in general. Most people, they only have one view of who we are, my mm -hmm. community. They see us in one bulk framework mm -hmm. or, or perspective. And there are several examples of people like me who come home and never go back and flourish in society and return successfully. But you don't hear about that in the media. Mm -hmm. Same thing with law enforcement. So my hope is to put myself in the shoes of a police officer and to sort of have that lived experience, a taste of the lived experience of what you go through every day. And hopefully just show people that, hey man, if you put yourself in someone else's shoes, you might just learn something different about Ooh. them and yourself. I love All right, so Artie, um, you receive a call about a guy that uh, possibly has a gun. Uh, they said he's in the garage of a gym and employees there said they saw him walk in with a gun and he was pointed at people. Okay. Uh, that's at least what the caller said. And so you get here, you're beyond those doors but when the scenario starts. And so you just see somebody that could possibly be the suspect. You don't know, you gotta find out. Hey, how's it going, sir? You all right? Just do it, just do it, just kill me. Got a call about uh, someone interesting here at the gym. Just do it. You got any weapons on you? Just do it, just do it. Just Why don't you turn around so I can have a conversation with just you? Just do it, just do it, just do it. Can I get you down here, sir? Just do it. Why don't you sit down, please? Just do it. Sit down and have a conversation with me. Sir, sit just down. Do it. Just 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 do it. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Do it. Kill me. Do it. Do it. Sir, I'm gonna need you to remove your hands from your jacket. Just do it. Sir, I'm gonna need you to remove your hands from your jacket. Just do it. Sir, place your hands where I, sir, do not reach. Just do it. Place your hands where I can see them. Take Just them out of the jacket. Just do it. Take your hand out of the jacket. Just do it. Just sir, do I will fire. Just do it, kill me. Just do it. What's going on here, sir? Just do it. What's going on? Take your hands out of the jacket. Just do it. Take your hands. Just do it. Put your hands. Get out. Get out. How'd you feel, Seth? I felt that you did pretty good uh, initially when I turned around the first time. I thought you were a little too close to me because ah. you were pretty much right on me. And then you let me turn and walk around a little bit more. I think that, because the call was a subject with a gun possibly, right? Yeah. That you could have utilized some other things, maybe cover, and then stood mm. from behind over there, and then maybe 
give me commands and kind of slowed it down when Before. you started saying, hey, sir, let me see your hands, show me your hands, because worst case scenario, if I had a gun when I turned, we were basically about here and you didn't have your firearm out yet, so you could have, right. you would have lost that one. How did you feel and what did you notice about this situation when you walked in? Well, honestly, knowing the situation, your senses are heightened. Man with a gun, potentially pointing at somebody, so you're already on the edge a little bit, knowing that he potentially has a weapon. Coming in, hands in the pocket. Immediate, immediate flat, red flag going up. So once he removed one arm, he didn't remove the other, so now I'm thinking that he has a gun. He's pacing back and forth, and once he began to turn his back to me, I started to look at the moments where I've been having an opportunity to potentially take him down without any uh, violent force. So once he gave me the opportunity, I just went into attack mode. Um, with his back to me, you're, you're blind. You have no idea what I'm gonna do. Now I can really take control of you. Absolutely, so that was a very, very courageous move to do, uh, but it's very dangerous. Yeah. Very, very dangerous because let's just say he does, and let's say you miss or whiff, and now you've hiding this guy up, and now let's say he really does have a gun. Mm -hmm. Are you at a disadvantage now? Absolutely. So this situation is difficult, man. It's obviously a clear suicide by cop. Suicide by cop calls are very, very, uh, they reoccur, unfortunately. And we don't want to have to kill a person, but is he still a threat to you potentially? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you didn't know, you hadn't searched him out yet. Did you search him at all yet? No. So you didn't But now know. that I think about it, there was no one else around and he was pretty much in this corner. So perhaps I should have kept my distance. And you could slow it down him from there. And you could have slowed it yeah. down. Yeah. I rushed in with my gun drawn. So I'm trying to handle him with one hand while my other hand is, I have a gun in it. So it, 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 it was it was an uncomfortable battle that I, I didn't know if I would be able to, but it you definitely put yourself at risk. Have you thought about any other ways that you could have potentially slowed this situation down? I could have placed my gun away once he uh, once he took, he, yeah, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> if I had a taser, you know, pretend but I didn't have a taser on me. So um, maybe if I would have held a conversation with him a little bit longer, you know, try and get him to calm down, get him to stand still for me. What would have been a safer way to do that? Being at a distance. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, playing, it, playing it cool, stand back. Did not, you look around the room to see if you could have used something around here to hide behind? I did not. I did not. Um, my focus was strictly on him. Keeping it a safe distance from him, not not forcing him to think that he's in any sort of like it's going to get physical or any way just giving him an opportunity to breathe knowing that i don't mean any harm to him so uh the big reveal is this actually happened with fontana pd uh fontana pd responded out to a situation where the guy called it in where a guy had a gun the officer shows up as soon as he gets out of his car he comes out with his gun out because he's assuming that this person has a gun which if you ask me that's justifiable all day long uh, but that officer, he continues to bark orders. Pull your hand out. Do not pull a gun out. I'm telling you right now, I will shoot you. You understand me? Pull it out and put your hands up in the air. After a while, he realizes there's something different about this. He hears this guy just saying, just shoot me, man. Just do it, man. Just do it. Pull your hand out. Just shoot pull me. your hand out right now. Pull your hand out. Shoot me. Dude, pull your hand out. Shoot I do me. not want to shoot you. So now he goes into a negotiation. He's de, -nego he's de escalating this, and this goes on for like 15 minutes. Pull your hand out, bro. Come on. Stop this. Don't do this, man. We'll get through whatever you're going through, man, but don't do this. Hey, talk to me, bro. Come on. You're going through some. Let me help you. Let me help you. Pull your hand out. Now, he was successfully able to talk this guy down and found out at the end of the day he only had a cell phone in his pocket. It's a cell phone. So we have to, today we got you guys amped up, we sped you guys up, but then we also have to have the ability to slow back down. And so it's hard to do that. So with training, with inoculating ourselves to stress, we can start to do that, but it's no easy job. If you go from a barking dog call to a man with a gun call to a guy, you know, that's, you know, ambushing people or, you know, shooting people in the, in the store, that's hard to do. So as always, this episode was brought to you by the one and only 88 Tactical. Make sure you guys go on 88tactical.com to see what they're doing. But it was also brought to you by the one and only Bedros Cooley on himself. Thanks again for allowing us to utilize these great facilities. Switch. They gon' learn how to day, yeah.